Thanks, guys, for, for viewing in. This is another edition of the Turbo Duo. Uh, we're getting our sillies out here. We're live, pal. <laughs> Goddamn, pal. Uh, as you can see, we've got our, uh, our Christmas edition here. Um, we've got some recent pickups, Christmas um, gifts that we received. And then uh, we and also... gave as well. As, and as well. <laughs> also, <laughs> also in addition in as... Addition, yeah, God willing. Um... And, uh, and then we went, uh, the, basically today we went out to Warwick, Rhode Island and checked out a new retro store, well new to us at least, the Toy Bowl. In Warwick, Rhode Island in the Warwick Mall, um, which was a lot of fun. They had a lot of different, um, you know, they had video games, but all different kinds of toys. Um, a lot of Star Wars stuff, a lot of wrestling figures. Um, the so, Man-Child Museum. Oh, gotta love it. So my son got to ride the merry-go-round, rode the only dragon on the merry-go-round, which, you know, that's baller right there. And they've just played the uh, genuine uh, pony yeah. all the time. Yeah, ride the pony. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I figured we would just get into it, show some of the some of the pickups, and, and roll with it like you guys have seen in the past. Um, and if you like this stuff, before we get into it, um, like, subscribe, comment, tell us what what you guys are looking for, what kind of views you want or uh, uh, videos you want to see, um, any game specific stuff. Let us know. Uh, hit us up on Instagram. No, we'll do what we want when we want. I like, to, I like to cater to the community a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, so the first one here is a legendary game. One. That uh, Trenton picked up for me the other day as uh, part of my late Christmas gift. And that was uh, PGA Tour 97, the immortal um, legendary title. As the back of the box says, a bold new approach to golf. Uh, if you guys can see that. I don't know how much, how, how much bold you yeah. can get. I, I'm sure these were flying <laughs> off the shelves for the Sega Saturn, which was already flying off the yeah, shelves. Yeah, they did a midnight release, just like they do for Madden. <laughs> <laughs> it was like The Last of Us Part 2. Um, you but get anyways, EA Sports T with it. I'm sure, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Don't you usually hate on PGA Tour Golf in like every video we do? As long as it's not PGA Golf. No, I hate on PGA Tour 96 because that game's hot garbage. Um, I guess this was a real bold new approach. Well, yeah, I mean, because they use like the dig digitized characters. It's almost like Pebble Beach Golf Links, which was a launch game for the Saturn. It's not saying much, but it's the number one 32-bit golf game. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Anyways, it's PGA Tour 97. Uh, the next uh, game here is another uh, Christmas gift that I got uh, from Trent. And that's Space Jam. Come on in Space Jam. All right. Is that it? Is that all you got? Yeah. All right. I mean, the soundtrack is amazing, not so much the game. Now, this says one to six players, so it's a three-on-three -three basketball game. I'm guessing you could do... Now, there's only two teams. It's the Monstars and the Toon Squad, if you guys have seen the movie back in the day when you were kids. or. But Jordan's in it. Yeah. So it makes yeah, it Yeah, and you got to pick Jordan and your team. Uh, the story about this game for me is that when I was probably... I don't know, 12 or 13, I, I went over to my cousin's for the holidays, and he had gotten this uh, for Christmas. And I remember us playing from the moment I got there to the moment we left. We just played nonstop Space Jam, like a tournament, you know, to see who could win, me, my brother, and, and him. You know, and when you're 12 or 13, you know, and it's the Space Jam game, it, you know, it would seem like an awesome thing. Honestly, it kind of plays a little like, a little like uh, Very NBA little Jam. like that. But it's more nostalgic for me just because of that moment in time. So whatever, it's Space Jam. I mean, I had the I had the Space Jam shorts and the Space Jam basketball no, when they came out. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, next game is um, most notable for it's... Mike Piazza's <laughs> mullet, and that's another gift from Trent. It's World Series baseball, and um, you know what can you say? It's now. Well, they see the thing is they should have went with Carlos Baerga as the front cover. Nobody knows Carlos <laughs> Baerga. Stop talking about stuff people don't know about. You know, it basically uses like a 3D plane and, and two-dimensional characters. I don't know if you guys can see that. They're, they're two-dimensional characters. It's sort of that wonky in between the 2D and the 3D era where I don't know if it really worked out. Next game is a puzzle game that Trenton got. Um, so we're racking up this, the Saturn games here. Fast on our way to the uh, Sega Dreamland. And that's Baku Baku Animal, or Baku Baku in this release here, which is... Um, you know what seems to be and I have not played it but it seems to be like a match three type puzzle game um, I've heard that it's it's pretty good people who have played it that I've you know heard or seen on YouTube seem to like it according but, to my uh, uber driver last month he what said it was amazing are you serious yeah I told you this tell me the story again for, for our viewers so like, <laughs> we can hear it again wait what happened no they just picked me up and they were talking about video games and then all of a sudden he just 
dropped Baku Baku out of nowhere. Wait a minute, you were talking about video games? Yeah. And he brought up Baku Baku. He brought, I didn't bring up Baku Baku. <laughs> were you talking even up. about S- not even Saturn or? or? I, uh, no, we were just talking about old video games. No, and then uh, yeah, we we're talking about like <laughs> the channel, and we were trying to yeah. get like a full Saturn collection. And yeah, he said ba- like Baku. He's like, oh yeah, I remember that game Baku Baku. It was just like so good, and I was like, I don't think anyone would ever bring that up in any conversation ever. <laughs> we'll let you know if we try it, and it's really good. Next game is. Got to be one of the worst games of the 32-bit era. Um, came out on 3DO, Sega Saturn. I don't know if even if it came out on PS1. But Mike Ditka's in it. <sighs> and it's not Mike Ditka football, which is a horrible game, but still probably better than this. And that's Quarterback Attack. The first-person gameplay, digitized characters, uh, digital pictures produced. So this is the these are the people so that produced good. Scotty, Pippin, Slam, All uh, the Slam FMB City. games on the Sega CD. Yeah, Corpse Killer. Um, I played this game once and for f- about five minutes and then I turned it off. It's got a Super Nintendo game that Trent got for me, I, I, kind of as a joke, I guess, but I, I've never played it. Again, another one, and, and let me know if it's good. And that's uh, <laughs> Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball on Super Nintendo. <sighs> it's a party in a cartridge. It's made by Hudson Soft, so you know it's good. They made Bomberman. Well, Hudson's, Hudson Soft is good, but... They have like mech warrior suits on and it's terrible he's jamming and oh no i've seen video of this you were playing this the other day i think well yeah because aj styles and kofi uh and xavier woods were playing right it. right right on up up down down oh uh, trent got me another game so he's he's re- i think he's got more <laughs> sega saturn games for me than i've actually gotten um but this is a bowling game and from what i hear it's average um so so completely forgettable word on the street is it's average <laughs> and that's 10 pin alley i know this was i always used to see this game back in egm uh, electronic gaming monthly um it was advertised it, for whatever i don't know what it was but that year that it came out it seemed like every single month there were like multiple ads in each egm it's bowling the way you like it without um, the shoes <laughs> how do you bowl without shoes it's, uh, this is the talk of the town around the water cooler at work. <laughs> <laughs> how's your how's your how's your ten pin alley game shaping up? Dude, uh, a little two ninety yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next game is a little bit more notable, um, and that's the Cathlete. Hell and, yeah! Yeah. So it's um, basically like you have uh, ten events. Um, it's uh, an Olympics game, basically, but probably the the best of the breed when it comes to arcade style. Yeah, arcade Olympic style games. You got the the long jump, you have um, the hammer throw, I think, you've got uh, triple jump, you know, the typical, um, you know, kind of decathlon events. It's like Virtua Fighter sports. Yeah, and um, so the experience that we have with this game is actually the sequel that came out on Dreamcast called Virtua Athlete 2000, which is awesome. phenomenal. <laughs> uh, I mean, we used to have four player battles all the time. We made our own characters and a lot of funny names that we can't really say on air. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but um, we had a lot of experience with that game, so um, of course I wanted to get this anyways for the, the Saturn collection, but uh, we're really well regarded and we, we like to, to put this one in. We're not going to put every Saturn game in our Saturn, but uh, this is probably one that will make the cut. So, uh, Decathlete. Uh, so we got another uh, gift for Christmas here. I didn't know anything about this. Um, but <laughs> I don't think anybody does. <laughs> where did you see this? Where did you... Uh, that was a, uh, a Marshall's find. Oh, gosh. It's like, um, the, the discovery land of, like, products. It's like Marshall's and TJ Maxx. You never know what you're gonna yeah, find. Yeah, there's just, like, 300 things in a pile. Yeah. It's like, electronic shavers, batteries, headphones, and this. Uh, and gaudy blow-up button-down shirts. Yeah. Uh, and that's, uh, the retro gaming mat. I, I can't wait to plug this thing in. Um, it's it's basically if you remember the, the power, power pad, pad for the Nintendo, but it's actually just a Nintendo controller. It's just a big. So mat. look at this kid. See how he's. You remember how we used to pound on the buttons or on the on the mat to get the the track guy to go faster? Well, he's using it as a controller to play the game. I guess you just gotta slap it, or I guess you could stand on it too. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be great. It's got tennis. That's one game. So it has it has 200 games. You can see. I don't know if you guys can tell. But the Adventure Island main character um, is in there, so. So it probably has like 176. I don't know. If, yeah, I mean, hopefully this is licensed <laughs> and not. 
It's got like 176 variations of Tetris and then like 24 <laughs> no, other Pong, games. No, Pong, even worse. Pong yeah. and combat. So, <laughs> we'll have to make a video of, of, of this and uh, show you guys. What sure, we... it'll be a spectacle. Today, picked up mainly... S For people who don't know, Trenton is a, is a, a wrestle head. He's uh, got... Just a little bit. Yeah, he's got a, um, so a Instagram. That was like the main reason things. why I wanted to go to the Toy Vault. For um, because I know the the one in the Crystal Mall had a bunch of wrestling figures. Yeah, see that was incognito. So you were like, "Yo, they got video games over there," but really you wanted to go for the wrestling figures. I oh, see what you're up to here. Yeah, I, I see, see what it is. See Get Sal to drive. <laughs> Get Sal to Sal to drive, and we'll check out the wrestling figures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the deal. that's right. Because you didn't even come over to the video games until way later. Well, you know, as soon as I see wrestling figures, it's just over. That's all it is. <laughs> Tunnel vision. <laughs> Um, so right. there was there was a lot of stuff there I wanted to get. I'll start with kind of like the lowest on the totem pole. Not anything I was looking for, but it was only eight dollars, um, which is a Taka Michinoku versus Brian Christopher two pack. Um, I mean, for eight dollars, can't can't go wrong. Yeah, let the people know because they don't know, but they might not know wrestling. What's the significance of these guys um, for that line? Well, these they just made a bunch of different grudge grudge matches once. There wasn't really any significance to it. I mean, they had a light heavyweight tournament back then. I think this... I don't remember for sure, but I think this might have been, like, the last the match in the tournament for the light heavyweight title, and Taka Michinoku ended up winning. Um, and actually, Brian Christopher, who would go on to be too sexy Brian Christopher and uh, too cool, who actually just... He just passed away this year, too. So that's kind of another reason I wanted to have it, too. I mean, for $8... In the box, I mean, kind of looks like the Riddler. And then I know a lot. Of, it's I mean, considering it was Jax at the time, like the talk. This is, I think this is like the only Taka Michinoku they made. Um, they might have made like a different. Is he a New Japan guy? <clears throat> oh, he's from or, Japan. Or all Japan? He was from Japan. They were just when they wanted to make this. What they 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 started the light heavyweight division because WCW started the cruiserweight division. So mm. they wanted to get something that would combat that. Uh, um, and like Taka Michinoku was like kind of trying to be like their main superstar. They was gonna try to be like their Rey Mysterio. Um, How'd that work out? Well, not so good. And then another Jack set, but this line is actually my favorite line they've ever put out, which is the classic superstars line. And this is one of like the later two packs, which is uh, Stone Cold versus The Rock. The Immortal Duo. It really is. Yeah, this was like one of the last lines because this was from 2009, which was the last year that Jax was making wrestling figures. Um, I mean, the, the other ones they had in line were, were the DX. They had the Bobby Heenan with Knuckleball Schwartz. So I, I actually never even seen this one out anywhere. So this is one I had to grab, you know, Stone Cold and The Rock. I don't know if I'll ever finish the two pack set, but I'm on my way to. Uh, I don't. I, I don't even know how many there are, but I'm trying to <clears throat> complete the whole the main line of all the all the single all the single figures. <coughs> I think I'm up to like 250 by now. So <clears throat> today at the toy ball, um, they had some pretty cool stuff there. Um, stuff I don't normally see at the the places we usually go, but Trenton actually knows quite a bit about this game, and I was asking him because. And I don't know what it, what it was, but every single game that they that they had there that was boxed had no manual. It was just, I don't know what the luck was there, but this game's pretty well regarded from what I hear, um, and that's Robocop versus Terminator. Um, so you play as the Robocop, and basically just hunting down, I'm guessing Terminators. Um, but it's supposed to be a lot of fun. You can get like a spread weapon, almost like in Contra. You know, so it's, it's one of those things where, you know, Going around blasting blasting away foes and and um, you know delivering justice and uh, you know tight controls and you know good looks and So I'm excited good to, looks. Well good good you know good visuals, you know it actually looks oh, like no, it, it does yeah. It looks like a like a like a well-made game. I know? don't know if they did it on both the systems, but I, I think they know they, they did it. No, I'm not talking about the, the game, but uh, I don't know if they did it on the Genesis and the Super Nintendo or just the Super Nintendo, but there's two versions of this case there's one, if you see the front, it's got this this gray thing. It actually, it actually came in like the plastic, it, like a... Oh, like a grid like that? Yeah, it actually came in like a, oh. a, a special plastic uh, case. I maybe don't know if they did it on the Maybe Genesis. the Super Nintendo one came I don't like know that. if they did it on both or it was just the Super Nintendo one. Yeah, but act, instead of like being printed, it actually came in a case like that. Pretty nice pickup I got. So um, eBay sometimes, if you guys use eBay, um, they'll have like these like daily sales where they'll do... At least over the holidays they did oh yeah 15 percent off like 10 or 10 or 15 percent off um anything up to like a hundred dollar value sometimes 
So that's actually a really good time and, and video games usually qualify for that. The latest one actually didn't. I don't know if you saw that, but there was a sale and it said that video games were not included on it. But uh, you know, I'm looking for some higher value uh, Saturn games and um, uh, this is one that I've been looking for for a while. Um, <clears throat> We love beat em ups here on on, uh, on the Turbo Duo, and uh, there's not a ton of them. Really excited about this game, and that's uh, uh, Guardian Heroes. So, um, <clears throat> you got if you guys, if you guys have seen any uh, gameplay of this game, it's a side-scrolling beat em up, but you can do sort of special moves, almost like uh, like a fighting game. And there's three planes of action, so you can actually be in the in the background, the middle ground, or the foreground. It's like, it's like a super version of Samurai Showdown. Either that, or if you guys, this is kind of a deep cut, but if you know Top Hunter, oh. if you know Do Top Hunter from Neo Geo, I only know it because of the, the Wii compilation of Neo Geo games, but that was a game where you could go into the background or into the foreground. I think there were only two planes for that game. Um, but Guardian Heroes is regarded as one of the best beat-em-ups of all time. And um, Is it really? Uh, at least on the Saturn, but... Um, six players too. Well, the six so it's one to six players, but the six players is for the like the battle royale mode where yeah. it's it's six players basically fighting against one another to see who the last man standing is. Um, the normal game is just you know it's simultaneous two player you know beat em up style. Anyways, uh, that's Guardian Heroes, another one, another uh, key one off the list. Uh, so. And I think one of our previous videos I talked about Lobotomy Software when we did our unboxing, actually our last video, talking about Power Slave and Duke Nukem 3D. Damn, and, I'm good. Oh, we've been playing Duke Nukem 3D, and we'll probably play some after this video. That game is awesome. It's frustratingly hard, um, but only so, if, you, ha so yeah, it's if, you awesome. if you don't have the... The 3D controller. You need the 3D uh, analog yeah, controller. Don't listen to other reviews online. It's a good game. The Lobotomy Software team was able to do a lot of things with Saturn that other developers were not able to do. And the sequence line goes Power Slave, and then Duke Nukem 3D, and then the last game that they made for Saturn, which is Quake. And Quake basically took their engine and did as much as they possibly could. This is finally the game where they had three polygonal enemies in it. Um, as well as 3D environments. There's also exclusive levels in this. This does use the 3D control pad, as far as I know. Uh, don't play this with a, with a standard pad. But um, really, like, super excited to play this. Um, really I, I remember going to my buddy Devin's house, because <clears throat> uh, I was good friends with my buddy Pat, and we used to go over to his house, because he was right next door. And I remember his brother um, playing Quake on the computer, and it looked amazing. Now, I know this probably doesn't look as good as the PC even did then, um, but just the, the, the level to level action um, was kind of like a stepped up doom in a way at the time and um, so I'm really excited for, the, for, for Quake. This is uh, a cool game that I've been looking for. So I picked up one more big item at the Toy Vault today. Wasn't something I was particularly looking for but it's I'm, cool. I saw him in the case and uh, getting itchy. I know I had to grab it which is the talking Hasbro Hulk Hogan. Actually, the pull toy actually still somewhat works on it, um, depending on how fast, how slow you pull it. <laughs> it tells you eat your prayers, take your vitamins. Or wait, what did I say? Eat your, <laughs> eat your, prayer, eat your prayers, take your vitamins. Eat your you know, prayers. that's that's what it says. Yeah. Eat your prayers, take your vitamins. And it's actually in really... Feel the power of Hulkamania, yeah. is what I said? It's actually in really good condition. It just has a bunch of paint marks and scuff marks, but those are easy to take off. I've already taken some of them off just by kind of like scratching them out. <coughs> so I'm pretty hyped about this. It was only 40 bucks. I mean, I've seen a bunch of them go for around $40 or more, depending on the condition. This is definitely because like the Hasbro's are only going up, so this is probably one that's just going to keep going up in price. Um, now I just need to get the Ultimate Warrior to, you know, put them together. Be happy about this one, though. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, dudes. Even though he blocked me on Twitter, um, still gotta have my Hulk Hogan merchandise. What do you mean he blocked you on Twitter? <laughs> Hulk Hogan blocked you? Yeah. Why? Because last year at, around WrestleMania, I just when when he was opening up the beach, <laughs> <laughs> when he was opening up the beach shop in uh, in Florida when I went to WrestleMania, um, he put out the price list <laughs> for how much an autograph was, and it was like. To get an autograph, it was like two hundred dollars, and then if you wanted to get your like you know two Trent put on it, that was like another fifty bucks. And so I just tweeted him. I was like, I was like, yo, why is it so much to get an autograph? And he blocked me. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he gets a lot of crap. We love you, Hulkster. We still do. Yeah, I, dude. I cried. I cried when you lost to the Ultimate Warrior. I'll never forget that pay per view, WrestleMania six. Uh, my dreams were destroyed that night. It like squeaks, like it goes higher. So it sounds like it sounds like Mighty Mouse is saying it. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of depends on how fast you pull it or let it go. Right. I mean, surprisingly, it still works. All right, this is a gaming show. Enough with your Hulk Hogan. <laughs> No, we're, we're blending worlds together. Worlds are colliding! Gosh. This was just one I picked up because I had bought some other games for him and it was part of like a deal where you can buy two, get one free. And I was just trying to find a game that I didn't already have that was like under $8, uh, which is Zoom, the Sega Genesis. I think it's like a puzzle kind of game. So Zoom is actually, it was close to, I think it was close to a launch game. Um, it might not be a launch game, but it was right. It looks uh, super right, early. It was right around there. Uh, it could have been right after like 1990 started, but um, you know the Genesis came out in I think September, August, excuse me, of '89. Uh, so Zoom is like Kicks. If you guys know what Kicks is, Quicks. Uh, I, I, Q I X. Um, if you can pronounce it, Quicks or Kicks. Isn't it? It's Q Q U I X. No. Nope. Oh, it's just. Q oh yeah. Yeah. Q yeah, that's a game. I remember playing it on Game Boy. You're just like a dot, and you gotta draw like right, you gotta cover the space without getting hit by the. You have to basically board. you have to you have to eliminate tiles by drawing a square around them. Which is actually funner than it sounds. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. You know what would be nice too if funner was a word. Um, oh, it is a word. I, I just said it. So it is a word. Actually, I think the dictionary does recognize <laughs> funner as a word now. Right. Um, you did it on your own point. <laughs> <laughs> it never used to be, but now in the advent of social media, people make up words and they stick. Um, anyways, it's supposed to be a, a decent game. You know, not, nothing too notable. I mean, when you had Revenge of Shinobi, Altered Beast, you <laughs> know, any other game. <laughs> yeah, and Pat Riley's best. Well, no, I mean it's 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 better than Last Battle. I mean, but you know. who would, I mean, like, just imagine like who would be buying that game like when like the Genesis came out. <laughs> I don't know. Um, one of the cooler things that we that we grabbed um, was a really thoughtful gift, actually, um, and that was from the man to my left here. Trenton, <coughs> Trenton produces our show, and um, he's getting, I guess, involved in woodwork, and uh, he built something really uh, special, I thought, um, and thoughtful for me um, because we're we're big uh, beat 'em up Streets of Rage fans. He actually built me this box. Kaboom! Um, screen printed the uh, the marquee with uh, put plexiglass, and then did you know all of this wood here? Um, you know, did the, the countersinking, the stripping. It's hard wood, um, baby. There's there's a switch in here with a with a power. Um, you know, a, it's basically just a power adapter, arcade marquee light box, and it actually lights up. You know, you you, you plug it in, you flick the switch. And this lights up like a, like an arcade marquee, which is really cool. So it's going on our media center. Um, hit him up, uh, hit us up on uh, Instagram if you think this is cool. Maybe we'll do a little post just to put it out there. But yeah, I made yeah. it with um, three quarter inch MDF, which is medium density fiberboard, which is I think it's the same exact stuff they use in the arcade cabinets because um, you have to get the T molding, which is the like the plastic strips they put on all the sides of it. So you have to cut grooves in this th in this stuff and glue it down to hold the, the strip in. Um, yeah, countersunk all the holes, kind of cut the grooves, the curves out on this to give it like the rounded edges. Um, kind of put everything together with clamps. This is the first time he did it, and it's awesome. I mean, it's it's awesome. And the uh, the power plug is here. Um, I don't know anything about electronics, but he knew what AC adapter he had to find for it and drilled it all in and put it all together. There's LED stripping in here and, um, you know, just uh, really awesome. So I appreciate it, man. Yeah. And I made another one, too. Another uh, oh, Street Fighter he, one. And he made well, I'll post yeah, a picture of that one. Street Fighter one. 2 for my little guy. He's got it in his room and he wants it on every night. He's actually been sick and... And the other night he was he was sweating because he, <laughs> he was breaking his fever. And so he got me up. He's like, Daddy, Daddy, I, I, need, I, I need to change. I'm all sweaty. And so I, I'm, I'm literally in the process of like changing his clothes and he looks over to the right and sees the light and just goes, Street Fighter, at like four in the morning, which at that point, it's just, I guess he had to be there, but it was, it was really funny to hear him say that. It made me start laughing. It's his new nightlight. Yeah. Last thing that I have um, is awesome. 
I got it as a package deal. Um, there was a game and an accessory or a peripheral. And um, not your peripheral. Yeah. And um, so the game, and this was for Christmas. It was a Christmas gift um, from my wife um, that I paid for. And uh, <laughs> uh, the game that came with it was uh, was Gun Griffin. Uh, so it's a mech game. Um, you know, I'm sure it's just being a mech, running around, or, or it's like a robotic throttling around. It's like a robotic Blake Griffin. It kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Um, it says fight through fog, snow, and night levels. So there's there's a, there's missions. So it's not just one on one. Um, I, again, I don't know much about it, but um, it came with the peripheral that I was looking for. So another one that I needed. The peripheral. Um, I just love saying peripheral. <laughs> well, because I would give it away if I said <laughs> what kind of peripheral. It's a controller, and it is the Sega Saturn Mission Stick. Now, I can't think of any Mission Stick that came out as a first-party accessory for any system. Maybe the PlayStation, but I don't know if, if that was made by ASCII or somebody else. They had a, they had a Mission Stick. Um, but this game... I don't think any company ever made their own. This game uses analog controls with the Mission Stick. It was one of the you know first uh, controllers to do that. Um, it uses like this weird light sensing technology wherever you're turning if there's less light that's how the character moves it's kind of crazy to, to think about but um, pretty cool tech and um, at the time the two games that used it I were the only two games well yeah I mean this was 1995 where Panzer Dragoon I don't know if you guys can see that Panzer Dragoon and, and Blackfire I wanted it in the box because I wanted it to, dis to display the box um, so the reason why I got it is for this game here, Sega Ages, which has a pretty much arcade perfect version of Space Hero and Afterburner 3, or excuse me, Afterburner 2. Um, and you know, in the arcade, Space Hero used a stick uh, to move the character or the Harrier around. And from what I hear, this emulates that pretty much to a T. So you can use the mission stick on those. You can. Oh, yep. If you can use oh, because it uses the 3D pad. Yep, yep. So the, any any game that uses the 3D pad can also use, for the most part, the mission stick. So um, that was the, the prime purpose, but I've been playing a lot of Panzer Dragoon, and I gotta tell you guys, it is fantastic to control, especially with the um, with the sliders bumped up on the uh, on the rapid fire, because you can just trounce guys. I mean, it, 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 makes, it, it makes it so much fun to actually destroy the bosses. Um, un until like yesterday, I couldn't get through the fourth boss until I had this controller. So I'm excited about it. Oh, let me show you guys what it looks like. I mean, obviously you've seen the picture, but so this is what it looks like. I have it set up for left hand grip right now, uh, but you can set it up on left or you can set it up on the right. It basically just slide it over and you can have it on just on this side in. instead of this side if you want. Just so, slide it in. Dude. But um, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's the one I was really excited about for Christmas. So this is... We've talked about this game before. Yeah, I think we talked about it Disappointment on, in our first video. Yeah, I was trying to get it at one of the gaming conventions. RWX. Think, yeah, Retro World Expo. This is a game I've been looking after for a while. I actually have Company's Core. I actually have the other one, uh, Battle Corpse, which I don't think is as as good as this game, but it's like two of their like like known games on the Sega CD, and that is Soul Star. I've had to compare it to anything. It's kind of like a mix between Silpede and Star Fox, in a way. It has like elements of like Star Fox, especially like in the first level. Um, it kind of—it's not just like a straight-up shooter because you can like. There's some stages where you can just like walk on the ground and kind of move around. Control takes a little bit getting used to, but this is the kind of game that should have been made on the Sega CD. More of them. More of them. Because this really shows off the power of the Sega CD, like the scaling, the graphics, the music. We were playing this the other day, and in the second level, uh, you are going towards what looks like a planet, or it could be like a base. <laughs> yeah, he was freaking out about the scaling of the moon. And he's playing this game, <laughs> and this thing, it's real time, the ship is moving forward, you're fighting all these fighters that are coming in. 
it looks three dimensional because of the way the scaling is happening and the fact that you're going into the screen. And this thing is scaling real time, getting bigger and bigger in your view. He's like, the moon! It's getting bigger! I can't believe it! It was so amazing. If you guys get a chance to play this game, play, oh my gosh, you have to play it. I When this game came in, because I, I ordered it about a month ago, and I wanted to test it to make sure it was working before I, I gave it to him, and... I could not put it down. I was like testing it, and I was like, I have to, I have to beat this first boss. I have to, I have to do it. Um, and uh, I just got roped in, and it was, it was a ton of fun. So I, I want to play more of this. You know, it's, it's so good. It kind of reminds me of what I don't, I don't know if this, this must have came out after. When it kind of reminds me of Star Fox Two. So I was gonna say it's, a, it's like a mixture of Star Fox and Star Fox Two. Uh, I, I hate Star Fox Two. That game's yeah, horrible. Because like, the reason why that didn't come out, but it's got. No, they. It's the, got the same kind. It's of got the on rails board. like Panzer Dragoon. It's got like on rails segments, and then you have these boss encounters where they are open, open nature. So basically, it's a it's a three D plane, and you're you know flying around anywhere you want to go in that three D space, and you know attacking guys or going after the boss. The first level has a boss in the center. Trouncing guys, as you like to say. <laughs> yeah, um, but you you basically it's free roaming. On the, on the boss portion, at least in the first level. So it's got a mix of that, you know, first person uh, on rails uh, sh shooter portion, and then it's got the, you know, the real, the, the open open platform or 3D, um, what do you want to call it? Um, free roaming section. This is like the game Star Fox wanted to be. I, I was so impressed with this game. It just, I wish that Sega CD would have had more games like this. It would have been, I think, a, a lot more successful than if it was just MFME games and then. And then Genesis games that just had different soundtracks. I mean, it would have just that would have showcased the power a lot more, and I just think it was underutilized. Anyways, can't recommend it enough. All right, let's let's uh, let's finish strong, baby. And the last Kima one. one. <laughs> As a kid, I I don't even know how I got the action figures for this because there was a TV show for this game, and I guess it only lasted a season. Don't remember ever watching it, but I remember going to Kmart and picking up a bunch of the figures. And that is Stone Protectors. Another, another positive. Another, another classic game. Yeah. Basically, beat 'em up Ninja Turtles. Beat 'em up. Um, but the graphics on this are, are really good. The music is pretty jam. It's everything that you would want in like a '90s game. They got the graffiti style They're fonts. More '90s than the '90s. Very colorful. Yeah. Um, it's like a cartoon, really, too. Like the, the cutscenes. Well, yeah. Well, it's based on the it's based on the cartoon. Yeah. So but you feel like you're watching a cartoon as you're playing it. It has the cutscenes are kind of like Battletoads, where the characters kind of like their mouths are moving, but the the image is stationary, and then there's the words underneath um, that they're you know they're talking and you know kind of progressing the story as you go from level to level. Yeah. I mean, we kind of we kind of hyped this this game up for a while because we've been talking about it for at least like a year or two now, um, trying to find it. If there was a gripe about the game, it's that. The enemy selection is yeah, a little there's barren. Only like, there's like it's, Samurai Warrior, and then that's pretty much it. Yeah, there's like it's, two enemies. It's also, at least we played it on normal, or, or the, the basic setting, and it was too easy. It, yeah, it was pretty easy. They give yeah. you a lot of one-ups in the game, two-ups. Which is not a bad way to start the game. You know, try it once on the, the regular mode, and then maybe bump it up. I'd like to play it again. I'm just, I'm more happy that it's actually a good game. I know. Because we, like, beat-em-ups are our favorite, and we've played a few of them that have been hyped up, like, I picked up Combat Tribes like a few years ago because I heard that one was really good and it's uh, I don't know the, the sound I think it's the sound effects in the game like when you punch somebody in the game yeah, you want we to you want to feel it yeah sound this, is really important and this game know, actually plays like really good you know each character kind of has their own special moves like I was like the wrestler oh, Chester yeah. and he like you do pile drivers body slams Back body drop. Yeah, so that's that kind of di um, makes it different from like other of the beat 'em up. What was like, the other one that we got? We got the one with the the guys with the mohawks. I remember, it was for either your Super birthday. Nintendo? No, it was for Genesis. But, um, two crew dudes. Oh, two bad dudes. Oh yeah, two yeah. Two crew dudes, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. was just I mean, it was okay. It wasn't. That's like a I, side. Yeah, that's only like you're on like one plane. No, like I know. Side scroll, I like. know, but I would put Stone Protectors kind of like right there underneath. Streets of Rage, Turtles, uh, you know, two, three, four, and Final Fight. I would say it's 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 kind of like because yeah, it's a late release. If too, it's, it's not like if it's not on their level, it's kind of just right underneath. Which maybe is a reason why it gets the cred that it does. I mean, a complete in box copy goes for well over a hundred dollars, I think. Um, 
you know, it's a Super Nintendo game. It's hard to find the boxes. Yeah, the only the only flaw is just the uh, the enemies. There's just not enough not enough variety. Um, but I mean, other than that, if you like beat 'em ups, this this, this is a top notch beat 'em up. Yeah. And especially for the ending at the end where they all get together, you gotta watch the ending. Oh. It's great. <laughs> that's a whole session. Yeah. That's. that's... <laughs> But anyway, so uh, so we enjoyed it. We had a great Christmas. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you like the video, uh, please like, um, subscribe, comment, um, give us feedback. Let us know what you want, um, and um, uh, look us up on uh, Instagram. We're usually posting uh, at least a few times a week um, with some new things that are happening going on with the Turbo Duo. Um, anything else you wanted to, to share? Thank you, Hulk. <laughs> Thanks for that input. You done? No. Have a great, uh, have a great rest <laughs> of the day, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, that's funny. Whoa, what's that? Star Wars, huh? You got a Kari Warriors figures anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> we'll need Kari Warriors three.